Hello everyone, uh, this is Franco Gonzalez again, Senior Technology Analyst at ID TechX. Um, I'm happy to be here in the, our uh, ID TechX show in Berlin 2016. And I wanted to show you uh, one of our exhibitors. This is uh, Bert from Tank2. And uh, I was wondering if you can explain us a little bit uh, Bert, about uh, your technology. Sure. So what we do is we make uh, big battery packs for applications such as uh, electric cars, but anything that uses electricity is a potential application. So what we do different than everybody else is that we use intelligent cells. So the cells that you see in here, they have an ellipsoid shape. So they're made from the same uh, electrically active material as all the other batteries. Typically we sell them with just traditional uh, lithium ion uh, chemistry inside, but our customers can get whatever works best for their application. But they also have a chip inside and the chip allows the internal electrical cell to be connected to any of the external electrical contacts of the ellipsoid. So and what that means is that any of these contacts can be the positive or the negative terminal of the individual cell. And because the cells are ellipsoid shapes, shaped, which gives a very high random packing density, so 71.5 to 72% of the area of the space inside the container is filled with cells. So, and because these cells touch each other uh, on average about 11 times, so 11 kissing points as we call them, leads to billions and billions of potential routes. So these cells, they create a three-dimensional map so which cell touches which other cell and then an algorithm is applied which allows a, a very constantly varying route scheme to um, build a collection of, of cells that work together to get the maximum amount of energy out of the pack. So every 12 seconds the routing changes. So for example cells that are now connected like this, 12 seconds later maybe are connected like that. So, and that means that, for example, you can have uh, two weak cells work together with a series of strong cells because a constantly changing routing system means that strong cells and weak cells can work together because then the weak cells get, for example, half of the duty load than a strong cell gets. Oh, so uh, can I ask, are you monitoring what's the state of each one of the individual cells and you monitor which are in a better shape? and then the algorithm defines what the, is the, better, the best optimal connection That's right. between so the cells. All the cells are continuously monitored. So all the data about how they have behaved in the past, how they are expected to behave in the future, so for example, the expected residual value, the expected to remain in lifetime, all that is known in advance. So, and the algorithm takes these things into account in such a way that uh, it proactively anticipates how much a cell will suffer from a certain load. So in a traditional battery pack, all the cells deliver the same amount of current. So and if you have a weak cell in the pack, it means that the rest of the pack actually has to throttle back in order to be able to remain the balance. So battery balancing in a traditional lithium ion system means burning off the excess energy in the good cells. We don't do that. We just reroute the cells in such a way that each cell contributes to the best of its own ability. And that makes the system drastically more efficient than a dumb battery pack where all the connections between the individual cells are fixed. Oh, I see. So it's a combination of, of series and parallel connections? That's correct. Okay. So it's a, a combination of series and parallel connections that is also changing on a constant basis. So oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, the algorithm determines really, you know, that for example, if you have a number of weak cells and a number of strong cells, so it tries to virtually uh, categorize them in such a way that they work with their own peers, mm. meaning that uh, a good, a high quality cell and a low quality cell, they work nicely together. So what you see here is, uh, oh, so what you see here is the, 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 the logical way that it works. So we can fill or empty the tank also with high-speed air transportation mechanisms. So we work with a German industrial company called uh, Zeppelin Systems. And what they do is they are the uh, industry leader in industrial uh, automation and they do uh, high-speed air-based transportation systems. So they do handling of bulk solids so they can handle uh, the transportation of, for example, uh, these cells from one container to the next and vice versa. So they are building the swap station with us and uh, this swap station which you just saw here. So it will have the ability to empty the contents of a pack and refill it with freshly charged cells mm. in less than three minutes. 
Right. So that means that you can build an electric car that can go from fully discharged state to fully charged state in less than three minutes. Wow, that's very really interesting. Mm. And all of this is possible by making the cells individually smart rather than take a dump pack and slap electronics on top of it to mm. you know, make it smart. But it's much, uh, much more versatile. There are many more options uh, to increase you know, the utilization rate, to lower the cost and give the flexibility if the intelligence is put on cell level. Hmm. This is a really interesting concept. Uh, probably is the first time I've seen this before, so it's, it's quite interesting. So what's, what's your plan? What are, you, are you looking to do a prototype or...? or uh... Oh, we have, we have prototypes already. Okay. So the reason why we're here is that you know, this is a B2B conference, right? So uh, what we try to do is we try to inform our potential uh, business customers about the emergence of this technology. Uh, several of uh, our potential clients already have a prototype in-house, which mm. they're evaluating. Mm. Uh, around summertime, we're expecting to have production-grade versions mm. that will have the full performance of the system. Mm. And uh, the current plan is to introduce the system, let's say, mm. to, the free, to, to the public as a whole uh, in the beginning of next year. And what in, in speak, we speak about the price in comparison with traditional lithium batteries, batteries, what, what would be uh, the comparison? Yeah. There is an incremental cost, obviously, right? So the, we have to put a chip inside uh, each, each cell. And uh, the good thing about this is, though, that the chips, I mean, they're coming from the consumer electronics side. So they're benefiting from a high volume industry, which is very cost optimized. And the current estimate is that uh, the chip will cost no more than 15 cents. Hmm. So, but because we're able to get a higher, a higher amount of energy out of a given amount of, say, lithium, whatever the active material is, we actually claim that the cost of our system is lower oh, instead of higher. The total cost. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Okay. So. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Well, thank you very much, Bert. Thanks. Very, very interesting right. technology. Thank you very much. Oh. All right. Let's open this prototype here, which gives you an idea about how this works. So uh, I take out uh, this production cell here. So that's what it looks like. It's made out of two uh, varying parts, but it's also available with exactly the same material on both sides. So it's, uh, uh, it's plated. So there's a special alloy um, put on the outside, which, uh, which can be given any arbitrary shape. So the, 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 the customer can define what kind of uh, contact geometry works best for them and of course we have all the tools available to determine which one works best. So about this here, so this is gives an idea about how the process of discovery and routing goes. So when the system is first started, so the three-dimensional map is drawn, it figures out what way uh, the cells are touching one another, so you see here the cell number, the contact number and so on. And then when the algorithm determines that, okay, for example, there should be three strings that are formed, you see here, they are of varying lengths, they are put together and the, the cells in the tank actually obey what the algorithm determines it to do. So in this case, there would be three different strings of varying lengths working together and uh, DC and DC to DC converters bring the varying string output voltage up to the level that works for our customer's application, which is typically a high voltage DC bus of about uh, 300 volts. Okay. Very interesting.